Hey folks, in this episode we're going to learn how to make this glitch effect. It's a fairly easy effect to achieve. There's multiple ways you can achieve this effect in Blender. I'm going to show you my take, so without further ado, let's get to it. So I've opened up Blender, I'm going to select all and I'm going to hit X for delete and we'll start with a blank canvas. I'm going to hit Shift A, add text. Then I'm going to hit R, X, 90 to rotate on the X axis by 90 degrees. I'm going to tab into edit mode and I'm going to type in glitch effect. I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. I then go over to my text data tab over here. Before I select a font you might have to go to edit preferences and then you go to file paths and up here under fonts select your font directory. When you've got your font directory selected in here you can then tap this button here and it will take you into your font folder. I'm going to select Arial bold. I'm going to scroll down change the alignment on the paragraph section to center and to middle. I'm then going to increase my character spacing, say 1.4. I'm going to change my line spacing, maybe 2.2. I'm then going to hit Shift A, Add, Mesh, and we'll go for the monkey. I'll then scale that down slightly. I'll go into my modifier section here. I'm going to add the modifier and I'm going to click Subdivision Surface. We'll set it to level two. I'll then click Apply. I'm going to hit Z and then Shade Smooth. And with this glitch effect, I'm going to convert this to a mesh. So go to Object, Convert and Mesh. When that's converted to a mesh, the topology is absolutely disgusting. So from here, I'm going to go to my modifiers and I'm going to add a remesh modifier. And I'm going to take this down to 0.01. I wouldn't go too low of this, Blender might crash. It's a bit jaggedy. If I was actually doing this for a final piece, I would retopologize the text. You can take it lower. So I'm going to apply the remesh modifier. I'm then going to hit Shift A, Add Mesh Plane. I'm going to hit R, X, 90 to rotate the plane on the X axis by 90 degrees. And I'm going to hit S, 4 to scale by 4. I'm then going to hit Control A, and apply the scale. I'm going to hit Numpad 3 to go into side view. I'm just going to drag this forward, G, Y, to around about maybe there we can fine tune it later i'll tab into edit mode right click and click subdivide i'm going to subdivide this mesh by maybe 12 and then tab out of edit mode and i'm going to add a subdivision surface at level two okay and then going to add another modifier which will be a displace modifier i then click new on here i'm going to tab this button here which will take us into the texture i'm going to change this texture to distorted noise i then change it from blender original to cell noise and blender original to cell noise i'm going to change the amount to 0.25 and the scale to one okay i'm going to go back to my modifier section i'm going to change the coordinate system to an object i'm then going to add that object so i'm going to hit shift a add and we'll go for empty sphere i'll scale that up by four so s4 and then hit enter i then select this plane here and then we'll choose that empty. The scale of the empty has changed the size of the texture. So with the plane selected, I'll go back to my textures and then maybe I'll take this back down to 0.25. Okay, that looks round about right. I'm then gonna add solidify modifier onto this plane. Navigate to your modifiers, go to add modifier and we'll go solidify. Maybe I'll increase the solidification by 0.2. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. As you can see, it's kind of intersecting with Suzanne. We don't want that, so we're going to change the mid-level and we'll bring that down to zero. So then it's only displacing in one direction. I'm then going to select my empty object, jump to frame one, and then I'm going to hit I and location. This will add three keyframes on X, Y, and Z location. I'm going to change the end point of my animation as well to 120 frames. So 120 on my timeline. I'll just drag this up slightly so we can visualize the timeline. I'm then going to go to the top left hand corner until you see this crosshair here. I'll drag this across and then I'm going to set this window to graph editor. With the graph editor selected, I'll open up my object transforms on the Y location. I'm going to go to modifiers and I'm going to add a noise modifier. I'm going to set the scale and strength to 25. So 25. 25 i'm going to select this restrict frame range click the checkbox start on frame one end on frame 120 because we've got 120 frames blend in over 50 frames and blend out over 50 frames and if i push play you can see we've got movement there maybe that might be a bit too much so i might increase the scale let's just add a camera into the scene so i'm going to hit shift a add and we'll go for camera I'm then going to go into top view, I'm going to hit GY, and we'll drag this around to about there. On my rotation over here, on the x-axis, I'm going to hit 90, and then Y, 0, Z, 0. Hit enter. So now if I hit numpad 0, 
and go into camera view. If you haven't got a numpad, I think you can go to view here, camera, active camera. Let's just close this. I'm going to set my camera to 24 mil, perhaps. Let's just go into x-ray view so we can see what we're doing here. And I might drag my camera forward till I've got the glitch effect and the monkey in full frame. If you can't see that, mute the displaced plane and frame up your scene. As you can see, we've got the X and Y and it kind of always stays in the middle. We don't want that. We want this to shift about a bit more. So with the empty selected, I'll just expand this window. I'm going to go to X location. I'm going to add another modifier and this is going to be a noise modifier too. I'm going to set the scale to, let's say 10, the strength to four. We'll have nothing on the offset, but we will restrict frame range. So on the start, it will be frame one. The end will be 120. Blend in over 15 frames and we'll blend out over 15 frames. I'm then going to hit this button here, which will copy that modifier. I'll then go to Z location, I'll paste that in and I'm going to change the offset to maybe 500 just so it's a different seed value. Go to front view, I'm going to push play. So now let's work on a couple of materials. So I'm going to set this graph editor to the shader editor. I'm going to hit end, close that window and with the glitch text selected, I'm going to click new. I'm then going to delete the principled BSDF. So X, I'm going to hit shift A, add shader and we'll go for emission. I'll plug the emission into the surface and I'll set the strength to two. This is just so we can see what we're doing. I might even select Suzanne the monkey and we'll set her with the same material for now. I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into rendered view. We'll just change this to EV. We can make this for cycles as well, but for now, I'm just going to do it for EV. And we'll go to the material settings over here and we'll select this displaced plane. I'm going to add a new material, click new, and we're going to delete the principal BSDF, hit delete. And then I'm going to add shift A, shader, and we'll go for refraction. I'm then going to duplicate that twice. So shift D and shift D. I'm then going to add a shader, add shader. We'll have two of those. So I'm going to add another one and I'm going to plug this first refraction into the top socket of the first add shader and this one into the second socket, this one into the top socket and this one into the second socket. Now if I plug this into here, we'll go into rendered view and nothing will happen because over here with the material settings, we need to change the settings to screen space refraction. Now we're starting to get something and this is how the refraction works. So we're going to set the top one to red. So I go to RGB turn those two down the second one will be green and the third one will be blue that's red green and blue can't see much happening at the moment but now we're going to offset the index of refraction so i'll click this button here we'll set that to 1.555 you can see the reds coming out now and i'll set this down one so they're all slightly offset by 0.1 and now you can see the rgb values coming through it's kind of split the channels because red green and blue make white and if you offset the index of refraction of each one then you can see the spectrum of light you can kind of see how this works if i decrease this you know it offsets the blue even further or if i increase this this will expand the red out even further so now what we need to do is we need to add a mix shader so we go to shader mix and we'll add that into there i then go shift a add shader select transparent and we'll pop that into there into the bottom socket the transparency won't work so in the blend mode over here we select alpha blend so now we can switch between our refractive shader element and our transparent shader element and we're going to animate these figures here so what i might do i'll just animate these now so on frame one with the transparent set to full i'm going to hit i and we'll skip to the last frame and the transparent element set to full i'm going to hit i and then we'll go to frame 15 and I'll switch from transparent to the refractive element. I'm going to hit I and then on frame 105, I'm going to set this to the refractive element. So now when I skip back to frame one and push play, it will transition from transparent into the refractive element back to transparent. Now we'll take it one step further. I'm now going to click Suzanne, shift click, select the displaced plane and then I'm going to hit control L and we're going to copy modifiers. I'm going to mute the plane. We don't need to see that. And now I've got Suzanne selected. You can see she's a complete and utter mess. So now we'll go into the modifiers. I'm going to delete the subdivision surface. I'm going to delete the solidify, but we're going to keep the displacement and to get a different seed on the texture. Because if we click this button, it's going to be using the same texture. We want to use a unique texture for this. So I'm going to click this two button. And now that texture is completely unique to Suzanne. Now we can change the scale. So maybe I'll change the scale to one. 
see how that looks and we'll also bring the strength down to point 0.1 let's just hit play we'll see what we've got here okay I'm kind of happy with that maybe we can adjust the texture a bit more maybe say we'll change the size to 0.5 let's just see what that does yeah that's a bit more glitchy I'm just going to copy the displacement on Suzanne onto the text effect so I'm gonna select for text shift select Suzanne hit control L and we'll copy those modifiers So now I'm going to go to frame 1. So with Suzanne selected, I'm going to set the strength to 0. I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to skip to the last frame. And I'm going to add a keyframe here. We'll then go to frame 15. I'm going to add the strength to 0.1. And I'll add a keyframe here. And then on frame 105, I'll select the strength to 0.1. And I'll add another keyframe there. So now it should transition from no displacement into displacement we'll do the same for the text effect so on frame one we'll add a keyframe with no strength on the last frame we'll add another keyframe on frame 15 i'm going to set the strength to 0.1 obviously set the strength to whatever desired effect you're going for i'm just doing this as an example and then on frame 105 i'll also set this to 0.1 and i'll add a keyframe there we'll do the same for the plane so with the plane selected on frame one, I'm gonna set it to zero. We're gonna add a keyframe. On the last frame, we're gonna keep it as zero. On frame 15, we'll set it to one. We'll add a keyframe. And on frame 105, I'm going to set it to one and we'll add another keyframe. I'm gonna mute the plane and we're gonna change the material for Suzanne. Let's go to frame one so we can see what we're doing. I'll drag this across so I've got my material editor. And to get the previous effect of the Suzanne on the example, I'll just show you the node setup for that. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to click this two button to make this material unique for Suzanne. So then if I change this material, it's not going to change the other material for the text. I'm going to add a principled BSDF. So that's Shift A, Shader, Principled. We'll add that there. I'm going to hit Shift A, Add, Shader, and we'll go for Mix Shader. I then plug the principled into the bottom socket. I'm then going to add an ambient oculation. So shift A, input ambient oculation. And we'll plug that into the mix factor. And then I'm going to hit shift A, add converter color ramp. And then we can crunch in the numbers with this color ramp here. So I'll drag that across, drag this across. For this to work, by the way, if you're an EV, you are going to have to have this ambient oculation option selected. Otherwise it won't work. I've got mine set to 10 meters. I might turn my trace position up. I'm going to reactivate my plane. Let's just close this window here. So I'm going to push play. Okay, I'm not entirely happy with the way that this is glitching out. So I'm just going to make a couple of adjustments. I might even add a couple of modifiers on here. It's a bit erratic. It's too much movement left to right. So I'm going to open up this window here. I'll drag this across. I'm going to open up my graph editor again. I'll drag this across. I'm going to select the empty. The empty which is controlling the movement. For the Y location, select my modifiers. I might change the strength down to 10. Let's just see what that does. Okay, and on the X and Z location, I'm gonna add another modifier and I'll choose stepped interpolation. So with that selected, to look at the step size, maybe change that to five. Okay, so it jumps rather than has a smooth transition. And I'm going to have the same for the Z location. So add modifier, stepped interpolation, and we'll set this to 5. Let's just go into front view. Okay, that's a bit better. Maybe on the Y location. I'll just try this at 25. Yeah, that's more like it. Go into rendered view, hit play. With this effect, you don't want swaying from left to right, up and down. It looks too organic. Whereas when you've got a stepped interpolation, it's a bit more digital. Render settings. So if you go over to this tab here, on your output, you select your output. You can choose PNG to render out a PNG sequence and then composite it together in a video editor. Alternatively, you can choose FFmpeg and go to encoding, choose MPEG4 and select for codec H264. Medium quality is absolutely fine. Me, I render out as an image sequence usually PNG if it's a render that requires high dynamic range go for open EXR but for something like this PNG is absolutely fine you've got your output file location selected you've got your file format and then simply hit control left 12 and that will render out your image sequence 
that's pretty much the tutorial in a nutshell i hope you found use from it if you did please click the like button and hit subscribe it really helps my channel have a great day and thanks for watching